he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, I believe that you know he's one of the top. He's one of the. I think he's one of the top that's been in our sport. He carried us from the, you know, the grimmest days in the, the in the history of the sport, in my opinion, to back winning races week in and week out. He's a big part of RCR, and he'll always be. I'd heard about him through some friends in California. I said, you better keep your eye on this guy. And I said, man, that, that kid's pretty good. So uh, I watched him after that. And then when the opportunity came to look for someone to drive in the Xfinity series, back then the Bush series, uh, we made the call to Kevin. We were definitely excited to get someone like him just again from watching him and knowing his ability and his car control. And, you know, it's a lot easier to calm people down than it is to, uh, you know, kick them up, try to make them run harder. So we were, we were kind of used to that as well at RCR with having Dale Earnhardt and things like that. You had really someone that hustled hard and uh, you, we knew Kevin was going to be, felt like Kevin was going to be very much a go-getter. His expectations were super high and um, that's what we all had high expectations. And so there was really only one way to go and that was to uh, not, not be able to do what you were expecting to do because you knew himself and you as a company, you know, we were all planning on, you know, rewriting it all. I knew after that first race in 2000 at Daytona, we had something really special. And I could see the direction and the attitude. He was only 23 when he started racing for us, and maybe 25 at the time we started full time. And for a young man uh, to come into sport and start racing and doing what he did, he was surpassing our expectations for sure. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt. We had just lost our hero. So he was the obvious person to put in the, into the car, especially with his talent. To put Kevin Harvick in that car, I called Bobby uh, Hutchins and said, have Kevin at the shop tonight. We're gonna to go to uh, Rockingham, we're gonna race. I wanna put Kevin in the car. Instantly you went from, you know, someone that people knew was gonna be up and coming and great to replacing arguably the best guy in history, you know, in his car. So I think there was a lot of weight on his shoulders. You know, you can't prepare yourself for what he had to go through, because none of us knew that we were gonna lose Dale. So are you ready for this race? I knew Kevin was strong. He, he was a very strong, mentally prepared person, and he could handle uh, that where I don't think any other 25-year-old young man would have handled it. That was uh, a year I'll always remember with Kevin and how he handled it. And to be able to go to Atlanta and win the first race his third race in a cup car, and go down there and win that race, that was a healing moment. Get up off your seat. Here Gordon they go. For two in a row, trying to set him up. Gordon's gonna make the big move on the inside when they get down here to turn three. Slow car's gonna be in the way. Just That's like a year ago, he's gonna get him, though. Here he's they gonna come. get him. Gordon got loose, it's Harvey. Harvey by oh. inches. Harvey oh. by inches. Harvey by inches. The biggest thing I can remember it was watching him come across the finish line. And Kevin made the move on Jeff. Jeff made the move on him to get inside of him and just barely, barely beat him. And we didn't know for until the scoreboard flashed and they announced that the 29 car won the race. And then the emotion really hit us all. I'm telling you, I'm speechless. What could be more fitting? What could be more special? I don't think anyone left their seats. They, the whole stands were full, and they were all holding up three, and the fans loved it. And like I say, it was an emotional trip for all of us. You can't explain it coming out like we did and, uh, and winning so quickly. It was amazing. It's hard to explain the feeling that you get when that happened, right? We didn't even know which end was up at that point in time still. You know, I think it's just hard to believe that it happened the way it happened. It meant to the organization that somebody else could win races in our equipment. Obviously, what Richard and Dale had built over the years was 
you know, you'd want it to continue on and go forever. And, and when Kevin got in there and performed the way he did, that we could still win races and still go after championships. And it would just, it made you, the whole company just stand up and like really get behind Kevin as a driver and continue to grow this thing. And that's, uh, it's probably a big part, honestly, of why we're still here. Because how easy would it have been, you know, at that point? Because Richard, you know, didn't have to, to, to continue to grow this. The win at, at Atlanta substantiated his ability to be able to go do it and racing Jeff Gordon for that and, and whatever. And throughout that whole year, I mean, he was definitely like competing at a ridiculously high level with a group of people that was used to doing things in an entirely different way. So I think that um, ultimately he, um, he, he showed that really, really early on that he was going to be able to get into this and compete at this. At, a high level and win races and championships and you know he uh, was able to do all that. For all drivers need to have that confidence that they're capable of make, taking that next step and then it just fired him up more and uh, you know his aggressiveness is you know obviously you see what it is on the track but it's more back at the shop what he needs in a race car what he aggressiveness towards making changes to make us better uh, and he he got in there and started you know uh, pushing and, and trying to make make car's better and uh, he realized that he could win and then uh, it was on from there. Kevin was feisty everyone knows that and I liked that in him I liked to see the grip that he had and he showed it and that's what made him special and what, what made him stand out. What you see is what you get with Kevin I mean he, he is that passionate about winning when he gets in the in, in the car his work ethic and, uh, and his work ethic even when he was not in the car, was just aggressive and, and, and was going to do whatever it took to win races. Um, and uh, he was just a hard worker and, and put everything into it. You know, he pushed everyone to a level that, you know, that a lot of people didn't know they were capable of being pushed to. So I think that um, he, he made the place, uh, you know, a lot of what it is today and, and, and pushed excellence. Kevin was the, the lead guy he was the that guy through that period of time you know we had other drivers the other great drivers you know during that period of time but kevin was that guy for rcr he was our flagship driver and you know uh your franchise quarterback is what I, I guess you'd say kevin harvick is aggressive he's a fighter he's a winner but inside and off the track he's a very kind person to a lot of people and does a lot for people that people don't understand and don't, do not know. And I think that's one of the probably misunderstandings about Kevin is he's got a kind spark, uh, part to him as well. On the racetrack, he's still that, that guy, can, he gets it done, but he's, 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 uh, he's different today. I think he's more, more humble, more thankful. You know, I see that in him, and uh, then I see just what kind of dad he is. That's pretty cool. And I think that we all worked together, and we won quite a few races. And, uh, you know, I've seen Kevin Harvick grow throughout the career here at RCR. I've seen him grow over at Stuart Haas Racing. Kevin will go down in NASCAR history. He will go in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's, uh, he's brought so much to the sport. Uh, so much action, so much activity, and I don't even know where RCR would be today if Kevin hadn't got in that car and succeeded like he did. He's a big part of RCR and will, he'll always be. Kevin Harvick, Forever 29. Kevin Harvick, Forever 29. Kevin Harvick, Forever 29. What could be more fitting? What could be more special? Amazing.